sunny with random wind gusts today again. And what's going on today? This was kind of interesting. I've often heard about counter drone tech in terms of, I guess, jamming things like signals. I guess in this case, you'd literally be, I guess, taking it down with lasers and stuff. This one says, Russia uses new generation of laser weapons in Ukraine. Russia on Wednesday said it was using a new generation of powerful laser weapons in Ukraine to burn up drones deploying some of Moscow's secret weapons to counter a flood of Western arms supplied to its former Soviet neighbor. President Vladimir Putin in 2018 unveiled an array of new weapons including a new intercontinental ballistic missile, underwater nuclear drones, a supersonic weapon and a new laser weapon. Little is known about the specifics of the new laser weapons. Putin mentioned one called Peresvet, named after medieval orthodox warrior monk Alexander Peresvet, who perished in mortal combat. It makes me wonder too in reading this, how is it possible that you can avoid, let's just say, everything else and just specifically target, let's just say, the drone? It says here he said though that there were already more powerful Russian systems that Peresvet that could burn up drones and other equipment. Borisov cited a test on Tuesday which he said had burned up a drone five kilometers away within five seconds. Again, I'm trying to imagine that. Lasers or whatever stretching as far as five kilometers, taking out a drone. How does that not, let's just say, hit a person or a building or something like that as well? That sounds kind of crazy if this is all accurate. And it goes on to say further, if Peresvet blinds, then the new generation of laser weapons lead to the physical destruction of the target. Thermal destruction, they burn up. Borisov told Russian state television. Asked if such weapons were being used in Ukraine, Borisov said yes, the first prototypes are already being used there. He said the weapon was called Zadira. Would you believe that's accurate or would you think it's quote, I guess, propaganda to intimidate people? Again, I don't see how you can avoid hitting every single target along the path if you're specifically just say trying to target the drone and all that. Although in something cooler, I guess, here apparently there is an underwater robot that can instantly, I guess, transform into a flying drone, like literally fly out underwater as well. Look kind of cool. This one says, aerial aquatic robots capable of crossing the air-water boundary and hitchhiking on surfaces. Many real-world applications for robots such as long-term aerial and underwater observation, cross-medium operations and marine life surveys require robots with the ability to move between the air-water boundary. Here we describe an aerial aquatic hitchhiking robot that is self-contained for flying, swimming and attaching to surfaces in both air and water and that can seamlessly move between the two. So it's kind of cool, you can see it transforming and all that too. It says here we describe an aerial aquatic hitchhiking robot that is self-contained for flying, swimming and attaching to surfaces in both air and water that can seamlessly move between the two. We describe this robot's redundant, hydrodrastically enhanced hitchhiking device inspired by the morphology of Remora disc, which works in both air and water. As with the biological Remora disc, this device has separate lamellar compartments for redundant sealing which enables the robot to achieve adhesion and hitchhike with only partial disc attachment. The self-contained rotor-based aerial aquatic robot which is passively morphing propellers that unfold in the air and fold underwater can cross the air-water boundary in 0.35 seconds. So it's really cool in seeing this. Can you imagine using something like this just for everyday life for example? Or even for fun I guess? It'll be a while I suppose. And this one's kind of interesting where it dealt with another story of something happening I guess with a manned aircraft. But I guess in this case it was more light-hearted overall I suppose. Like when you read what happened. Apparently somebody had to give birth to a baby while they were on board and I guess all the staff they said they were calm and so forth and everything was okay. Here it says from Frontier Airlines, exemplary and calm were the words Captain Chris Nye used for the flight attendant Diana Geraldo's heroic task of delivering a baby recently mid-flight. The baby couldn't wait so the early and unexpected labor took place on flight from Denver International Airport to Orlando International Airport. Diana helped the mother to the back of the lavatory and assisted the mother in giving birth. Can you imagine that? It says Diana again went above and beyond after the completion of the flight to coordinate our return to Orlando. The whole crew really did a great job. I transferred controls and flying duties to my first officer as I coordinated the diversion. Dispatch did a great job as well by suggesting Pensacola Airport and getting a gate and paramedics ready for us. 
This was a job well done and I was happy to see everyone working together to successfully deliver a newborn on an aircraft. And I guess this is fitting, apparently the mom decided to give the baby's middle name Sky it says because well it was born literally I guess in the sky during an airplane flight. Alright, see you guys later.